Hello everyone, my name is Stanley and today we're going to be continuing our Rubik's Cube series for uh, solving a Rubik's Cube beginner's method and this video is going to be for part two. So basically this video is going to be teaching you how to solve the second layer for the Rubik's Cube. If you haven't already, you can check out my part one video for solving the first layer. And we're also going to be learning how to do the yellow cross on top as for the next step in completing the last layer. So stay tuned and we're going to begin. So first things first, we see that we already have the first layer completed. Uh, all the edge pieces for the bottom layer match up with the center pieces uh, accordingly with all the corner pieces in the correct spots. Now, basically what we have to do is find edge pieces that basically go into the correct spots for the second layer. The first thing that we do is that we have to find edge pieces that are on the top layer, like where the yellow center is. So the first things first, I can see easily that there is an edge piece right here that is red and blue. So let's find it. It has to be into this spot because blue and red centers are right here. So therefore that edge piece must go in here. So what we have to do first is once we see this edge piece on the top layer, we will move it so that this part of the edge piece, this, uh, this part on the side has to match the center. So basically we have to move the edge piece so that the side part of this edge piece will match with a center. And we know that this edge piece is going to be placed into here. So the first thing that we have to do is that we can consider this blue centerpiece as the left part and the red, red centerpiece as the right part. So once we have an edge piece that is connected to either the left or the right part, our objective is to move that edge piece to either, either one of these positions, basically away from these two spots. And in order to determine which position to move it in, well, we see that this red is uh, connected to the red center. This, this side part of the edge piece is connected to the red center. And the red center is the right part. So when we move it to one of these two, since this is on the right part, we're going to move it to this right position. So basically, since this is on the right, we will move it like so, so that it is now, that edge piece is now on this position. So if, if the edge piece was somehow over here and connected to the blue, then we would have to move it to this position over here. But for now, it is on the right side, so let's move it to this side over here. Now, we will use that algorithm that I taught you in the previous part. If you don't remember, it's just the right face up, uh, the uh, top face clockwise, the right face down, and the top face counterclockwise. And just a heads up, so the algorithm I just demonstrated is predominantly on the right side, but we can also do it on the left hand side too. It's just going to be reversed. So instead of the right face going up, we do the left face going up. And instead of the top face going clockwise, we do counterclockwise. The left face goes back down and the top face goes clockwise. And it's basically that same algorithm, but it's on your left hand. That will be important later on. So now that we put that blue and red edge on this position over here, away from the centers over here. What we have to do is that we have to bring this corner, this uh, corner for blue, red, and white out. So what we do, we would not use that right algorithm because it would just mess it up, as you can see. So what we have to do is that we would have to use the left algorithm, that, that algorithm that I taught you, but on the left. Um, in order to not mess up uh, the placement of the uh, edge piece over here. So let's move the corner out without messing uh, the positions of this edge piece using the left algorithm. So since we're using the left algorithm, we're going to be holding the Rubik's Cube on the right side, not the left side. So let's do the left algorithm. It's left up, counterclockwise, the top face, left down, and the top face will go clockwise. So now we can see that this corner piece is now up here with the edge piece over here, and it has not moved at all. So now that we moved it up with our left algorithm, we can now use our right algorithm to basically attach this corner piece and this edge piece and put it in. So what we do is that we can rotate it like this on the left side, and then we can just perform our right algorithm. We can just do the right face up, 
clockwise, top face clockwise, uh, the right face back down, and the top face counterclockwise. And now you can see that the corner is back in and the edge piece is connected with it on the right position. Basically, we would have to do this uh, to all the other edge pieces that we find on the top here. So we immediately see an edge piece that is orange and blue. It's already in the place that we want it to be. It's already connected to the orange side and it needs to be over here. So the orange side is the left and the blue is on the right in this scenario. So since this edge piece is connected to the left side, we will move it to that away position, but on the left side over here. So now that we have done that, we can move the corner piece out. And since it's on the left side, we will use the right algorithm. So let's do the right face up, the top face clockwise, right face down, and the top face counterclockwise. Now we can see the corner piece is up uh, on the top layer and the edge piece is not moved at all. It's still in the same position. And now it is good to use the left, but we have to, uh, the left algorithm, but we have to rotate it so that's like this. And then we can perform it and basically connects it all and puts it back in. So it's the left face up, it's the top face counterclockwise, it's the left face down, and the top face clockwise. So now that same edge piece is put in correctly, the corner piece is put in correctly, and we have done two uh, edge pieces correctly. Now we have the remaining two. Uh, we can see here uh, a, red and, uh, a red and green edge piece over here. So let's move it so that it connects with the green over here. So the red is on the left over here. The green is on the right over here. This edge piece is connected to the green. So it's connected to the right side. Let's move this edge piece away from us and on the right position over here. So let's move this corner up. And since this is on the right side, we're gonna use the left algorithm here. So we're gonna have to do the left face up, the top face counterclockwise, the left face down, and the top face clockwise. Now that that corner is out and the edge piece is uh, still there, we can now rotate it on this side and perform the right algorithm in order to put it in. So it's the right face up, top face clockwise, right face down, and top face counterclockwise. Now it's put in and we only have one more to go. Everything else is good to go. So that last piece is over here. We can see that is an orange and a green. So let's connect it so that it's connected with the orange and the green is on the left and the orange is on the right. So uh, we have to move this edge piece to the right side over there away from us. And we will use the left algorithm to uh, move this corner out. So let's go left face up, counterclockwise top face, left face back down and the top face clockwise. So now that the corner piece is out, edge piece is there, we can use the right algorithm, right face up, top face clockwise, uh, right face down, and um, and the top face counterclockwise. Now we have completely uh, solved the entire second layer. But sometimes it might not be as straightforward as what I just demonstrated. For example, what happens if the edge piece is there, but it's flipped or is on the second layer, but we want to get it out so that we can solve it correctly? Well, in order to do that, we have to take this edge piece to the top layer first. So how do we do that? Well, let's just take a random piece that shouldn't belong in the second layer, such as this yellow and orange piece that's on the top layer right here. Let's pretend that this piece, this yellow and orange piece should go in here so that it swaps this out. So let's pretend that this yellow and orange piece is connected with this blue. And let's move it to that left position away from us. Now let's take this corner out as we usually do with that right algorithm since it's on the left, uh, since that edge piece is on the left over there. Let's do right face up, uh, top face clockwise, right face down and uh, counterclockwise top face. Now that, that corner is out and the, the edge piece is still over there. Let's use the left algorithm and put it in. So now we can see that that piece was just put in, that, that substitute piece, that yellow and orange edge that we just put in, and that corner is back there. And we can see that that edge piece that was originally in the second layer is now on the top layer over here and ready to be solved. So let's connect it with blue since it's blue and red, and let's connect it with blue. It blue is on the left side. 
Uh, so let's move it away from us in the left position, take out the corner with the algorithm, and now it's ready to be put in with the left algorithm. Now we have solved it. Now that we've completed the second layer, it's time to do the third layer. So the first step to the third layer is that we have to get a yellow cross over here. So there's a few ways that after you solve the second layer, the top face could look like. For me right now, it is a one dot, one yellow center with no yellow edge piece with a yellow uh, side up here. So it's just a yellow dot over here. We're not gonna be looking at corner pieces much for now uh, when we're putting in the yellow cross, we're just gonna be considering these edge pieces over here. And since there's no yellow side up here on the edge pieces, um, we're going to perform this algorithm. Basically the algorithm is you do the front face over here, the front face, it could be on any side, but I'm just choosing this side. We do the front face this way, clockwise, and then we perform that same algorithm that I was doing before. It's the right face up, the uh, top face clockwise, uh, the right face back down, and uh, the top face counterclockwise, and that front face back down. So we can see that we have now have this L shape, this L shape with two edge pieces now facing the yellow up here. And it's possible to also start from this L shape. But now that we have the L shape, we'll move the L shape so that it's facing on the top left so that one of the yellow sides will be on the left and the other yellow side will be on the top. So, uh, so once you're in this position, you just perform that algorithm once more. We do the front face clockwise, the right face up, the top face clockwise, uh, the right face down and the top face counterclockwise and we can put that front face back down. Now, now instead of an L, we can see a line so that the uh, sides of the yellows are on opposite sides. It's just one line. So hold it so that the yellow is horizontal and let's perform that algorithm one more time. Front face, the right face. Now we have finally gotten the yellow cross. Now it's important to know that once you've completed the second layer, you could have gotten any of those um, variations. You could have started with a dot, you could have started with an L, you could have started with a, a line, or you could have just gotten a cross if you're lucky. I guess this wraps, this basically wraps up my video. Uh, I hope you learned how to uh, solve the second layer and uh, solve the yellow cross on top. And we'll continue with the third layer uh, on my next video for solving a Rubik's Cube beginner's method, part three. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you check out any of our videos that are also made by us. I hope everyone has a good day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!